Dit is Marieke van Meijeren van de Bewustzijnschool uit Amsterdam. Dit is weer een nieuwe aflevering van de podcast die jij in heel Nederland kan luisteren vanuit je stoel, vanuit de trein, vanuit het vliegtuig, waar je dan ook maar bent. Om jou de tools en tips en tricks, inspiratie, informatie en extraordinary kennis te geven, zodat jij het leven kan leiden en het leven kan vormgeven zoals jij het optimaal voor jezelf voor ogen hebt. Want dat is immers de bedoeling. Hi everyone. Welcome to this podcast. I am Maaike and this is actually my first podcast ever. So I feel kind of excited and nervous at the same time. The topic of today's podcast is breaking out of the loop of fear. How do we break out of the loop of fear? A loop of which you are perhaps completely unaware. That it is created by fear and that it is retained by fear. I will explain this further by an example I often see within the workspace. But first, I certainly want to talk a little bit more about the definition of fear. Fear is such a broad concept. For example, if we speak about a light version of fear, we speak of tension. Think about the tension you feel when you're about to enter the stage to give a presentation, hold a speech, or like me now, record a podcast. It is the healthy kind of fear which ensures us to be alert and to be able to deliver the kick-ass performance we like to give. If we talk about a heavier kind of fear, the so to say life-threatening fear, we think about things we are confronted with in movies or through the news, like wars, kidnapping, killing, things that for most of us happen outside of our daily lives. When I talk about fear in this podcast, I talk about the kind of fear that is not life-threatening to begin with. I talk about the fear that is triggered by the mind, anxiety. It is fed by stress, by self-rejection, by not feeling good enough. It is the kind of fear that might seem to be innocent and normal. It might even feel as part of you. Until it gets out of hand and you start to see what it does to you. You start to feel what a difference it is to live without this anxiety. A lot of times we don't even realize that it is this mind-driven fear that causes specific physical and mental reaction that hold us back in our daily life, that prevents us of being our true self. This kind of fear most often has a direct connection with our need to control things, to control, to control the outcomes, to not trust life. Anxiety Anxiety makes us inflexible, stressful and less resilient to cope with the difficulties we face in, on our life path. So different people act and react in different ways when it comes to the need to control or to anxiety. How does this mind-driven fear affect the way we approach ourselves and others? Let's take this into the work environment. In general, I see two coping methods here. Two characters. One person can have both characters within him or her. It depends on the kind of situation which is revealed. The behavior in private situations can also be very different from the behavior at work. The first character is formed by those who cannot let go of control. Because if they do, they believe things will go wrong. The work will either pile up or ends up full of mistakes. So, so they do everything themselves. And if, in an exceptional occasion, they hand the work over to someone else, they put so much time in correcting it to their own standards that they were better off doing it themselves after all. So they start saying yes to everything and create a lot of work for themselves. At the same time, they get really frustrated with the people that in their eyes don't take responsibility for delivering good work and, in the worst case, still nag about their heavy workload. How on earth can they be so busy, right? The second character is formed by those who react in an opposite way, the ones that nag in the eyes of the first character people. They feel insecure and are likely to avoid any kind of re responsibility. They are scared of being rejected, so they already decided themselves that they are not good enough and therefore avoid situations in which things can go wrong. 
in which they feel the pressure of responsibility. So they stay in the safe zone. Um, so they can never be blamed for making mistakes or uh, saying something stupid. At the same time, they get really frustrated and dissatisfied because they feel like they don't get a chance to develop themselves or to grow further up. What happens in the office space is that those two characters maintain each other, which causes even more frustration. The ones who feel over-responsible, who cannot loosen up the strings, will end up doing or checking everything themselves. And by doing so, they're sending out the message to their colleagues. Whatever you do, I will check your work anyway, because I don't trust you to be capable of doing the job as good as me. So please don't feel too responsible. So the ones who were already convinced that they are not good enough take this signal to confirm their negative beliefs, which feeds their attitude that they need to be controlled and they don't have to take full, full responsibility for their work. They will not feel confident enough to step out of their comfort zone, which prevents them from growing. And basically, this is exactly the message they send out. I am not ready yet to grow. Both characters forget that making mistakes is what makes them human. That we can learn from mistakes if we reflect on them and go beyond the shame, beyond guilt or whatever feelings are triggered by making mistakes. Nobody is perfect, or better said, everybody is already perfect. There's nothing you have to do or to be. People see you how you want them to see you. You get what you are asking for. So now I'd like to do a short reflection with you. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Feel your feet firmly on the ground. Fully arrive in this moment. And think to yourself, in which of the mentioned characters do I recognize myself? In which situation did you act or felt this way? And what message did you send out by responding in the way you did? Now think how acting like this character really makes you feel. Is this really how you want to act? Or does it, does it give you any kind of tension, any stress? Does it make you feel tired, sad or insecure maybe? Now see all these feelings, all this fear of letting go, of stepping outside of your comfort zone. Visualize it as a big dark cloud hanging above your head. And you have the string to this cloud in your hand. Now imagine how you open your hand and let go of this string. See how this big dark cloud full of anxiety, of control, slowly drifts away. You are not this fear. Even without this fear, without this controlling, everything is okay. You are still here, with your feet firmly, firmly grounded on this big earth that is giving you support, always. How does this make you feel? Slowly open your eyes and come back to the room you are in. So, like I said, the same person can use both coping methods in different situations. I for sure recognize myself in both. For years I fighted against who I truly was. I suffered from panic attacks, had a very low self-esteem, never felt good enough, which made, which made me wanting to control everything. Life felt like such a big effort to live. In a sense, I felt a victim of all the things that happened in my life. Apparently, I wasn't worthy to really be happy, so I thought. But I didn't trust life at all, 
And I literally had to fall on my head, crash my nervous system to even realize that I was doing this all to myself. To realize that I, only I, was responsible for my own happiness. Whichever character you recognize yourself the most in, both will burn you out in the end. They exhaust you. It is fighting against life, against your true self, which causes stress and anxiety. Which is a good thing, because this is an automatic sign of our body to slow us down, to take a good look at what we are doing and how it serves us. What do you need right now in order to feel at peace? The only thing is that we don't like listening to these signals. We always want to feel good. We always want to live upon the expectations that we force upon ourselves. Stick to the plan. Living life the way it's supposed to be lived. What we learned about how being successful looks like, right? But this ignoring attitude only builds up more stress and anxiety because we don't hear what we really need, what we really want. So how do we break out of this loop of fear? How can we manage anxiety, manage our reactions in situations we experience as stressful? The answer is a practice of reflecting and loving kindness. And in my mind's eye, I can see you rolling your eyes, not love again. But trust me, love is the answer to almost everything. Heart space and presence can truly heal your heart and break through the patterns that hold us back from living our full potential. I want to share a Buddhist mindfulness tool that a very inspiring teacher, Tara Bragg, mentions in a lot of her books. It is called RAIN. And it helps you to reflect on patterns and emotions. It directs your attention in such a structured way that it helps you to break through stress and difficulty. It pulls you directly into the moment. So this is how it works. Each letter in the word RAIN stands for states in this self-reflection meditation process. The R stands for recognize. Recognize what is happening right in that moment. What do you feel? How does your body react? Ask yourself out loud if you like. What is happening inside of me right now? Focus on whatever thoughts, emotions, feelings or sensations are arising. Some experiences are easily noticed and some might take a bit more effort. For example, you might straight away recognize sadness, anger, a feeling of powerlessness, anxiety or resentment or some obvious body sensations like turning red-headed or you start to sweat. But some reaction you might not notice straight away. For example, you might not directly notice how the emotion tends up specific parts of your body, your neck, your jaw, your shoulders. Also, you might not directly notice how you act from the urge to run away from whatever you are experiencing by seeking distraction in food, for example, in your telephone, in drinking, cigarettes, sports, sex, or whatever you think that makes you feel better on the short term. But trust me, it won't last. It's like kids who are fighting against their fatigue by getting more wild and loud, running around like crazy little animals, doing exactly the opposite of what they should do, which is resting, going to bed. Which brings me to the A of RAIN. We are not only recognizing all that is going on inside us, we are also allowing it. Allowing it just as it is. Although you really want to get rid of a certain feeling, thought or physical sensation, allow it all, sit with them. It might help to repeat a sentence like, let it be, it's okay. Or just say yes to everything you experience. Sadness, yes. Stress, yes. Feeling stupid, yes. Feeling lonely, definitely yes. Angry, yes. Tensed shoulders, yes. Only say yes to it. Your mind likes to make up a story around everything that you feel, wants to find an explanation, wants to solve it, 
But don't get caught up in your mind stories. Stick with observing. Allow everything to be. So these two stages might already give you a sense of relief, of peace. In the I stage of RAIN, we are going a slightly bit deeper. We are going to investigate what we experience. We are going to investigate ourselves with loving kindness by asking ourselves questions. Why do I feel this way? Why do I re react like this to certain people? What are my beliefs? What does this feeling want from me? What lies underneath this feeling? Reflect on your patterns, on your habits. Maybe you start to recognize shame or guilt. This stage can be difficult at the start, since we are so used to straight away look at what causes it and how we can solve it. We want to feel better and we want to feel better right now. But the point is not to make us feel better right at this moment. Eventually, yes, but now we have, have the intent to get to know ourselves and our reactions and to discover how they do or do not serve us to be the best version of ourselves. If you notice you are not approaching yourself gentle, getting angry or annoyed with yourself, remind yourself to investigate with kindness, with love. Gentleness is very important. We need to feel safe for healing to happen. We need to feel safe in order to be happy. It might help to think about the way you, should, you would approach someone you really care about. When he or she is struggling, approach yourself in exact this way. With a soft touch. So the last step of RAIN is non-identification. Once you start practicing with this RAIN method, you might start to truly feel that you are not your thoughts. You are not your mind stories. You are not your emotions. You are not the pains in your body. They are all here to tell you something, to teach you, to guide you your path. But they are temporary. They are all coming and going. We are not that. Otherwise, we could not have been aware of them coming and going. Everything we can observe cannot be who we are, who we truly are. When we start to sense this natural awareness within us, we begin to live from openness, from love towards others and towards ourselves. We gain a deep belief that we ourselves are the creators of our own life whatever is happening outside of us. I like to use this RAIN med med meditation in combination with writing, which I call high spirit writing. Writing helps me to create clarity, to get me out of my mind. It gives me a clear sight of what is happening inside of me, here and now. It helps me to find a state of peace within the difficulty and reconnect with my body. Basically, what I do is in the R stage of recognizing, I write down whatever I feel at that moment, whatever pops up. And then in the I stage, I investigate by asking myself questions on paper. It is kind of like an interview with uh, my subconscious, my higher self. So whenever you experience stress or you are caught up in a difficult situation, start working with rain or with high spirit writing and figure out what is happening right in that moment. How does your brain work? And does it work for you? Or is it holding you back by thinking and acting the way it does? I think I'm gonna close off this very first podcast now. I would love to hear how you liked it, so please share. Or if you have any question about self-reflection or developing more awareness, you can find me on social media, just send me a message or visit my web website www.slowcoach.works. And of course, you are more than welcome to join my High Spirit Writing class in Amsterdam. You can find it on the schedule of the Bewustsein School. Thanks so much for listening and I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you feel totally inspired and empowered to try out RAIN or High Spirit Writing. 
uh, to reflect upon yourself and to tap into that sense of awareness that you truly are. For now, I wish you a peaceful rest of your day or night. See you later.